we do have a very robust menu on top. And I'm going to start from the left top top left side of the of the menu. We have the app info, and that is where uh, you're going to have the Nomad Sculpt version uh, info, the language. Uh, right now, I think it only has English and Chinese. You'll access the turntable to create a turntable with uh, you know your iPad video uh, screen recording or your Samsung screen recording or Android screen recording, I should say. And then you can mini mini UI it, so that pretty much hides everything on your menu and it makes it small. And once you click on your icon, then the uh, menus will come back on again. If we move on over, we have our project menu, and this is where you're gonna do any of your saving, your importing of files, exporting of files, or setting up any type of renders uh, inside of Nomad Sculpt. After that, we have the scene menu. This is where you will have your object list of all the models that you have in your scene at the time, as well as access to primitive shapes that you can use in your sculptures um, and add into your scene at, at, at any moment. From there, we have the topology menu. This is where you're gonna get your poly count. This is where you're gonna have access to subdivision menu, the voxel remeshing menu. Um, any, any of you that use dynamic topology, this is where you're gonna access that, as well as any global remeshing. Um, I am gonna do a video later on comparing voxel remeshing and global remeshing, but right now, anybody that needs access to that, that's where, that's, that's where those options are. Moving on, we have the shading menu, and this is where you're gonna start making your models very, very pretty. Um, you have the choice of rendering your model either in PBR materials or in matte caps. Um, I usually use matte caps while I'm sculpting, and then when I'm ready to add color, I will switch back over to PBR. Um, as far as I'm aware, the, the PBR materials, they are, are vertex painting, they're not like texture painting, so you can't export them as far as I'm aware of right now. Uh, from there, we also have the additions of lights recently in, uh, in Nomad Sculpt. The lighting system has got a lot more robust. Um, we also have environments or HDRI maps where you can uh, build a base lighting from uh, an HDRI image and as well as material opacity. So if you need to make a certain object or material uh, uh, you know, transparent or see-through, that's where that opacity would work. The button or menu right after that is post-processing. This one has in, was introduced recently in a, uh, a couple updates ago, and this one is a game changer for rendering on, as, as far as I know, rendering on an iPad and in Nomad Sculpt. You have um, the ability to affect the resolution, as well as the um, quality of the render. You have reflections, AO, depth of field, bloom, tone mapping, chromatic aberration, vignetting, grain, sharpness, and curvatures. Moving on, we got the background menu, and this one you can adjust the background color of your work environment uh, and add some reference images. So if you guys have seen me sculpt on a few other videos, I did have images in the background of my file. That is where you add reference uh, images into your, your file. Um, I did go over three ways you can use images inside of Nomad Sculpt. So if you wanna check that video out, I will put a card um, in the corner as well as the link in the, at the end of the video when I bring up the end card in this video. And then the last menu on the left side is the camera menu. Anything having to do with the camera, be it you know adding an extra view, uh, the view type, so is it uh, orthographic, orth orthographic perspective. Uh, you can change your orbit mode, the speed of the camera, the pivot, as well as some of the focus settings in there. Now to move on to the last section of the top menu, the first one up is your current brush settings. Uh, note that not all brushes have settings that you can mess with in this menu, but whatever current brush you're on is gonna be that brush or that icon in the current brush settings. So after that, we have the stroke menu. This is where you kind of get into it a little bit more and adjust things like adding alphas, which the alpha shortcut also works for that. 
but you can also have uh, adjustments to stroke type, your fall off, and uh, many other stroke adjustments. The menu after that, the paint menu, and that adjusts intensity, the color, the roughness, the metalness, all in there. Um, that would be your paint menu. Next to that is the symmetry menu. So now this one you have how you want your, your, your symmetry to be affected, the method of it, the mirroring axis, and um, a couple object origins reset, as well as uh, resetting the direction of your, um, your mirroring or your symmetry. And right next to that, after the symmetry menu is the pen pressure menu. This is where you're gonna adjust your pen pressure sensitivity and many other options in there. Again, I'm not going over too in depth in these menus. I just want you to know which one is which and where you what's gonna be in there. From there, we have the layers menu. So when layers are really awesome, I should start using them more. Um, you know, a lot of people use them to make blend shapes for animations, but um, you can be kind of non-destructive with your model when you're using layers to so say, um, the model on screen i wanted them to have a smile and some uh, a, a more alive expression instead of having to sculpt over and re and do the smile and lose my original expression that i had on him if i make a layer that layer will allow me to it'll create a slider to go back and forth in between each iteration that i had sculpted so um it, it's a really powerful tool but uh, yeah, I, I have to do a whole other video on layers specifically. I know uh, Southern GFX, he's got an amazing video on layers. Um, so I would go check out his video if you can. I'll put a link in, in, in the description for his video so you can go show him some love. The guy's a beast when it comes to, um, you know, showing how the layers work in Nomad Sculpt. It's amazing. And then we have the display settings. This is gonna allow you to do wireframes, darken certain objects that you have selected, smooth shading, so on and so forth. There's a ton in here, but um, anything that has to do with what you see on your model or in your file, that's gonna be in display settings. Right next to that, we have the interface settings. Now, like I said, display settings affects what you see on screen and how you see it. The interface settings is exactly what I'm talking about, the whole UI, the whole interface. So if you want to add a shortcut, take away a shortcut, you're gonna go into the interface settings to uh, add some of that stuff, um, as well as adjusting colors and how big certain things are, how spaced apart um, certain icons are. Again, this the, the, I can go on for pro probably an hour or two just going in each of these menus on how robust they are and what exactly do they do. And last but not least is your brush menu. So uh, like I said, the uh, the brush icon that is on the left side of the right set of, to uh, of menus, that is for your current brush settings. But the icon of the brush that you have selected on the far right, that is going to be your uh, toolbox or your brush box. And that once you click on it, um, I think by default it's already shown, but I have mine currently where I can toggle it on and off because I don't want to have too much of my menu taken up or too much of my UI taken up by brushes. But you have all of your brushes in there. You can select from over about 24 different brushes or tools that's in there. Um, but yeah, that is your brush menu on the far right side. And if you guys have been wondering about what this cube looking object is in the in the top right corner of your file, that is the axis cube or direction cube. It lets you know what uh, side of your model that you're facing. So if you need to know what side is the front, right, left, back. Um, I mean, you can see what clearly which side is his front on, on my model. But when you're just starting out with a sphere or a cube and you're confused on like, okay, which side is my symmetry going to show up on? Um, it kind of gets a little confusing without a grid or something like this to show you. Um, if you also tap on it, if you tap on any of the the, the, the the directions, it will not only zoom into your model, but snap into that direction, that axis of view. But again, I made this video for anybody who is just a beginner, just opening up Nomad Sculpt. Uh, again, like I said, if you guys want me to go more in depth into all the menus, uh, I'd be glad to do some videos on that for you. I still haven't accessed everything or used everything in this, so it'll be a learning experience for me and I can ex explain or share with you my thoughts and experiences uh, on some of those other 
features, but uh, this this program is getting crazy, guys. Like, what you can do in here for an iPad software for 3D sculpting is amazing. And I mean, just as of today, uh, as I'm recording this, uh, at least this section of the audio, March 16th, the developer just released another update, adding some features, uh, adjusting some of the menus op menu options. So uh, I will try and and uh, mark notes on certain things that I had noticed right away add into the video uh, just with some cliff notes but anyways guys thank you again for watching thank you again for all the support and again please leave a like on the video to help get this out there and i will talk to you guys next time thank you peace